Number 17. Regular flights of supersonic aircraft in the stratosphere are of concern because such aircraft produce nitric oxide, which is NO2, as a byproduct in the exhaust of their engines. Nitric oxide reacts with ozone, and it has been suggested that this could contribute to depletion of the ozone layer. Oh no! The reaction NO plus O3 yields NO2 plus O2 is first order with respect to both NO and O3 with a rate constant of 2.20 times 10 to the 7th liters per mole per second. What is the instantaneous rate of disappearance of the NO when the concentration of NO is 3.3 times 10 to the negative 6th molarity and the concentration of O3 is 5.9 times 10 to the negative 7th molarity? Okay, a lot going on, but if we boil it down to it, right, they, they gave us a overall reaction, and they did say that this reaction is first order with respect to both NO and O3. So when it comes to nitric oxide, which is the NO, we know that that is first order. And when it comes to the O3, that's also first order as well. Okay. They gave us a rate constant, right? And a rate constant is always lowercase k. So whenever they say rate constant, that's lowercase k. And they told us that that was 2.20 times 10 to the seventh. Now the units here are liter per mole times seconds, right? Um, they say liter slash mole slash, but just know that when you have a double slash, that unit, the last unit is also in the denominator. So you could group these as well. Now just know, um, liter per mole, this is a flip-flop of molarity, right? Molarity is usually mole per liter, but you got a flip-flop going on here. So just know that sometimes you might see these units, but sometimes you might see them as one over molarity times seconds. Just know that they're the same exact thing. And if we get a little crazy here, right, any time that you have units in the denominator, just know that that's always raised to a negative exponent. So we could also represent these units by molarity to the negative one, because there's only one molarity here, and a negative means that it was in the denominator, and that's why it's also seconds to the minus one as well. So just trying to show you that the K units First off, they can change depending on the total order that you have, uh, but just know that you can see these in various different forms. But don't be, you know, don't be scared. It basically all means the same thing. Okay, so we have the rate constant. We know that they're first order for both of them, and we want to find out that rate, right? What is the instantaneous rate? Now, instantaneous rate means at a specific time. Ooh, almost wrote table. <laughs> Specific time. Okay. So anytime that you're searching for an instantaneous rate, it is at a rate at a specific time. But they didn't tell us the time here, right? I don't know if it's, you know, two seconds, three seconds, zero seconds, but it, it doesn't really necessarily matter. They gave us the concentrations. They told us, and maybe I'll put that over here. They told us that the NO concentration was 3.3 times 10 to the negative six molarity. And they told us that the O3 was 5.9 times 10 to the negative seventh. Now, there must be some type of formula. And you are exactly correct, right? Especially if they're talking about orders, rate constants, they give you molarities. We're looking for the general rate law. The general rate law formula is this right here, right? The rate law for any specific rate reaction is that rate value is going to equal your rate constant, which is K, times the concentration of the reactants raised to their orders. So from this general rate law, we could make a specific rate law based on our, our needs. So in this case, we could say rate equals the K value. And now who are the reactants? Well, from our balanced equation, we have NO and O3. Those are our two reactants, right? But just remember that if they tell you specifically what orders are important, those are the ones that we care about. So they might match the balanced equation, but they might not, and that's totally fine. 
So in this case, we have two reactants that matter, the NO and the O3. Just know that if you have multiple reactants, it's always multiplication, okay? It's not addition. So when you have multiple reactants, they're getting multiplied by each other, and both of them are going to be raised to their specific orders. We did say that for both of these, they're first order. So we could raise both of these, the NO is being raised to the first, and the O3 is being raised to the first. Now, since we have our specific formula, we can plug in our units. And everything looks good here. We have molarity already, so we don't have to convert. Uh, the molarity is in the rate constant units, so we are good for that. And I have no idea why, um, I have no idea why the, this word rate is just randomly here. I guess I was trying to say that we're trying to solve for the rate. And always know that a rate value is equal to molarity per second. It's the change in molarity over a change in time. So let's find it out. It says here specifically rate, but that just means the instantaneous rate at a specific point in time. Keep in mind that there's no time in these units, but that's okay. So the, the time doesn't really matter here. Okay, so let's do it. So we got the rate constant, which is 2.2 times 10 to the seventh, and that looks good. Technically, I should add the zero because of the sig figs. And then we have the two concentrations. They're both raised to the first, so you can put them in there. But, you know, anything raised to the first is itself. And the NO is 3.3 times 10 to the negative sixth. And the O3 is 5.9 times 10 to the negative seventh. I just want to make sure that those are the right numbers and everything looks good here. And now all we got to do is just plug it in. Rate equals, going to Calci, 2.20, second comma means times 10 to the, if you use the second comma, the EE button, uh, you don't have to use parentheses. So I say 2.20 times 10 to the seventh times 3.3 times 10 to the negative six. And keep stringing it along. That's going to be multiplied by the 5.9 times 10 to the negative seventh. Oop. And I just want to make sure I have all the numbers correctly. 2.20 with the seven, 3.3 to the negative six, 5.9 to the negative three, seven. Very good. And there we go. Uh, lowest sig figs, it seems like we got two going on here. So I'll give it back in two sig figs. So it's 4.3, 4 4.3 times 10 to the negative fifth, that's the instantaneous rate, and it's molarity per second. And that is it. That's the answer. Let's color it in nice and pretty. Give it a nice green. It's like a neon green, kinda, but beautiful nonetheless. Okay, what'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. I try to get back to you as much as I can in my spare time. And, um, yeah, if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're all greatly appreciated. You guys rock. And it's awesome to see how this channel is helping you in your classes. Keep studying hard. Good luck on those tests and quizzes. I'm rooting for you. All right. You got this. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.